and now a timeout also on the field. But Wyatt Barnes shooting the gap. It looks like somebody's down on the field for Bowie as we uh, go over that play. So why don't you do that while I try to figure out who is out on the field? Ball coming near side. Looked like McNeil, the Mavericks, wanted to go quick, come near side and sweep, meaning get all their blockers to get that edge. And Wyatt Barnes, number 34, having none of it, shoots through untouched and comes up with a great stop for minus yardage back to the 15. So if you look at it, it's probably... Mm, 32 yard attempt. Right, you go 15 plus 10, 25 plus 7. So the player down, but then getting back up on his feet is Michael Villarreal, the starting weak side linebacker. We'll get to the defense for Bowie. Had it, I mean, not been able to do that because the Mavericks were so quick to get out and they have been up tempo. And now it will be the sophomore. Bryce Wilson to do the honors from the right hash. Holding is Gerald Gary for a 32-yard attempt, and the Mavericks get it blocked! And it will go out of bounds on the near side sideline. Again, the Bowie Bulldogs, that's their first block of a field goal, their fifth block of the season. And the Bulldog defense, they were taken off guard to a certain degree, Steve, and they were able to not only get the stop that they needed to keep the McNeil Mavericks out of the end zone, but then the special teams came up big and made the block on the field goal. Absolutely. Derek Neptune, number two. Good to see him back. What I don't understand is why is the ball marked at the 15? The ball should come to the 20, but that's okay. Ball on the near side hash now. The second offensive series coming out here for the Bulldogs. It'll be Tello. Play action, throw out, left-hand side. Ball tipped, intended for... Carmine Eli, and well-timed, but uh, Keegan McBride, the sophomore, or excuse me, the senior, able to just get a bit of his finger on that one. And that'll bring up a second down, but a little bit more aggressive player. Uh, Bowie, Bowie had nothing but runs in their first series, and it was effective to a certain degree. It was. But again, with the weapons that Bowie has in the air attack, let him go. Let it fly. Receivers near side. Carmine Eli in motion from left to right now. He'll join Rowan Wells on the far side. Going right to left as Matabello, the lone back, will be a keeper by Tello. He is wrangled around and then it will be brought down by his ankles. He'll lose about a yard on the play. And they'll bring up a third and long situation. That was Darren Powell for the tackle for a loss, the sack. I, I, I like I like Cruz once he gives the ball off and then he can use the deception of faking to his rushers who are the primary runners of the ball and then he sneaks because it also sets up a good passing opportunity because you have to hold that linebacker crew so that your receivers can get downfield. That's Powell's eighth tackle for a loss. He's second on the team in that category. Matabella ranges out right hand side, then they'll throw on the slant. Carmine Eli is able to hold on to it. Gets a little bit of yak on top of that. He caught it at the 20-yard line. Goes upfield to the 23-yard line. Shy of the first down marker by two yards. And on a third and 11, the Bowie Bulldogs will be forced to punt it away on a fourth and two. See, on the play where you give up your quarterback on, on, on that on that run, it's a slow developing play with a lot of blockers in front of him. Cruz can't even get out of the way of his own guys. The deception tonight is going to be have to be off the fake handoffs. A Taylor deep to receive and the Polito punt. Here comes modest pressure again. It is a reasonably good punt. Again, it hits a at around the 43, it takes a good bulldog bounce, but then picked up by Taylor. He brings it up right hand side around the 35 yard line, near side sideline, past the 40, near the 41 yard line. First and 10 for the McNeil Mavericks going left to right. The field position battle continues between two run dominated teams on offense, and right now McNeil's winning that to this degree. At this point. Yeah, they, they are, but really the big gainer for McNeil was a pass, their first play downfield, which really got them most of the yardage. Two receivers left-hand side, one right, and that is Gerald Gary. We'll watch him as he is working up against Cole James, the number one corner here for Bowie. Back to pass is Saltz. He lobs it deep down the right side, and that will be incomplete. James on the coverage on Gary, and Gary asking and pleading for a defensive pass interference call. Will not get it. Hermes also. Coach Hermes not pleased in the least. Is marching down the sideline and pointing over to 
where the interaction happens. Well, I have to agree with them, except that the fact of the matter is there's a flag down one, but two in the backfield. Two, the ball was really overthrown. Personal foul, roughing the passer against Bowie. So it really is a moot point for Coach Hermes to get that upset over the call. With 4.02 left in the first quarter, it will still no move it up now. 15 yards and a first down for the Mavericks. They stop marching down into Bowie territory at around the 43-yard line. Knows the football right there on the near side hash going left to right. No score here in this play playoff round by District Brown of the Texas High School football playoffs between McNeil and Bowie. Roll out right hand side. Throwing on the run is Saltz, intended for Gary in the near side sideline. And just went over his head, even if he'd been able to catch that, which would have been a miraculous one in that. Cole James was all over Gary. Again, that's Good a tough to watch. Well, yeah, it is. And it's a tough pass for any quarterback going opposite of, of what. Uh, into the face of the defense there. Not going opposite because that would have been rolling out to the far side, but still a tough pass to complete. Passes here for McNeil. Now they'll go to the run game, and it will be Williams running it up about four yards down to the 40-yard line. And he'll be stopped there, and it'll bring up a third and seven for McNeil, the 40 of Bowie. Well, here's now when you need the pressure, D. Don't give up a cheap penalty and hitting the quarterback late. Just make sure you secure the tackle. Three backs set and now in motion out right hand side is Taylor. Two backs, it will be a handoff left hand side. Met and dropped for a loss of one on the play was Gaden. He had nowhere to go and coming in, Nick Beavers with the tackle for a loss will bring up a fourth and eight for McNeil in no man's land. Well, I think they're going to try to go for this because you may get a silly penalty that may put the Mavericks in, into a first down situation or a quick kick. Under three to go, fourth and eight from the 41 yard line for Bowie or for McNeil is the Mavericks. And now there's motion, a free play. McNeil will toss it down the left sideline for the end zone. And actually around the 15 yard line, but nonetheless, We'll see if this will be a procedural call against the Mavericks or offsides against the Bulldogs. And if it is offsides, that'll be five yards, not an automatic first down. It'll be fourth and three for the McNeil Mavericks. But still, there's a conference here for the officials, and that means... I don't understand why they conference right in the huddle of the McNeil <laughs> Mavericks offensive line, but I guess they can talk wherever they want. You shouldn't be able to influence the outcome. Usually they move away from the pile. But we're going to see what this call is. Harris, the referee. Offsides, Bowie. A couple of players that moved. But the, if nothing else, into the neutral zone. So. Well, here's the thing. Now you got a whole different play call if you want to go for it here in no man's land. Fourth and eight is a lot different than fourth and three. But McNeil got the first thing they wanted to do, which was get a penalty against Bowie to make it a little bit more advantageous. Trips right hand side, that's the long side of the field, one left, and now all kinds of motion here. Here comes Thomas in, and it's a keeper by Saltz, and he will get the first down, but now they'll stop the play as there was whistles beforehand. So now what, are they gonna move the, move the ball back? Yep, five yards. Ball start against <laughs> the against the McNeil Mavericks, another five yards back, and we're back where we started at fourth and eight at the Bowie 42. Well, that's a great call. Or 41, excuse me. By the McNeil Mavericks on the keeper because you sell out the handout, and you can't let anyone break contain. You saw that, Braylon Thomas Yeah, you get, yeah, yeah, you got to stay home. You got to stay Here's home. Fourth and eight, two receivers right-hand side, one left. Shotgun for Saltz. He has Williams to his right. Williams will now shift over to the left-hand side. And it might be a punt. You had, yep, Saltz scoot back another two or three yards and he'll punt it away, try to get this ball into the end zone or keep it from going into the end zone. And that's exactly what the McNeil Mavericks will do. Great coverage downfield, keeping it from going into the end zone. And be marked the four-yard line. And even though McNeil was not able to get anything going on that offensive series, a nice punt from 
Saltz. Yeah, great pump by Saltz. But here's the deal. No points on the bar board for the McNeil Mavericks. So another win by the Bowie defense. Right here, take a shot. You've got Rowan Wells, who's got all kinds of size on his opponent who's covering him. This guy is a magician as a sophomore. Let him make a play. Carmine Eli working on Cameron Green on the far side of the field. Rowan Wells, the aforementioned out the left-hand side. And it will be a handoff. Matabella finds a crease right inside past the 10 to the 15-yard line. And that is a gain of 11 on the play for Kaysen Matabella, the junior tailback. Love him. And that will bring up a first and 10 for the Bulldogs. And now they're going to go up tempo to a certain degree. It's kind of like the Buffalo Bills who quickly go to the line but then take their time once they... I don't, I don't like that because it kind of messes you up. You're running up to do nothing. Just, Just my opinion. It will be a handoff again. Matabella finds the crease right-hand side, moves the pile, past the 20 to the 21 to the 22-yard line. That's a favorable spot. Nonetheless, the Bulldogs will take it. Shy the first down marker by three, a gain of seven. Second down coming up, and we're at 147. Zeros on the board for both of these teams. McNeil's had the closest opportunities to score, but again, Bowie doing the job on defense, and the offense tries to flip the field a little bit and try to get something going here. Matabella finds the edge, tries to right-hand side. That's the far side of the field on a first down, excuse me, second down carry. On, needed three, gains two, short by a yard. Third and one coming up for the Bulldogs at their own. 24 yard line. Now, here's where Cruz Tello on third and one can use the choice decisions as to hand it off or keep it. Because now you've had a steady appetite of 24. Now, six can get into the action. Rowan Wells out near side to the left. It's along side of the field. Carmine Eli in motion from right to left. A little bit of window dressing. The handoff still goes to Mott the Bell, but he leans forward on a yard and a half carry. And all that move the chains once again makes it first and 10 for the Bulldogs with 53 seconds to go in the first quarter. Played no score at their own 26 yard line. The other thing about having the running back get the ball is he gets a four to five yard head start, a steam. Take the ball, elbow up, near side of the handoff guy to you, quarterback, most of the time, and then you get that first down. Rowan Wells out now up against Cameron Green on the far side of the field. Carmine Eli at near side. It's going to be another handoff. Matabella gets the carry. It's steady dose of Matabella right now. He gets up past the 30 to the 31-yard line for about five yards on the carry. And uh, see if you've always said you'll take four yards every time. Any anytime you can get four more the yards map, on first the down. equals out. It, it, absolutely. And it gives Cruz Tello the opportunity to make the choices here as we end the first quarter. That will be the final play of an eventful but still no score in the first quarter between the Bowie Bulldogs and the McNeil Mavericks. This is the Class 6A Division 2 portion of the Texas high school football playoffs. Again, you're watching the Class 6A Division II by district playoffs here along the NFHS network. The Curly Reeves Sports Complex, D. Hansen, joined by Steve Foster. The McNeil Mavericks taking on the Bowie Bulldogs here in the Class 6A Division II Texas High School Football Playoffs by District Edition. We flip sides now. The 
Bulldogs going from left to right, north to south, and the rain has subsided, at least the mist has, and a play action keeper, uh, zone read, excuse me, by Cruz Tello, and he will gain nothing on the play on a second and five from their own 31 yard line going left to right. They'll bring up a third and five situation here for the Bulldogs. They're not letting Cruz Tello get loose. So the way Cruz Tello can get loose tonight is by throwing the football. He can act like he's running. He's got plenty of weapons to throw to here on third and five. Rowan Wells out left-hand side. It's the short side of the field. Trips to the right-hand side. Shotgun Tello with Matabella to his left. Back to pass Tello. Pumps. And now he has time. But now he'll be flushed out and then throws it into the ground about past the line of scrimmage, I believe. Just past it. And uh, no one really around the ball. But the pressure finally came in and he had to get rid of it and that will bring up a fourth down and Bowie will be forced to punt for the third time in the game. Well here's the thing and I, I don't know if you guys like or listen to Tony Romo but he made a great point. You don't always have to go run run pass. You can pass on first down and still then get two good solid runs to get the defense out of rhythm. Here's Jacob Polito averaging it just around 32 yards per punt. Snap back, takes his time, angles the right-hand side, line driver as Aiden Taylor has to go over his head wisely. Hits at the 30-yard line, goes inside of the 20, and it will trickle its way down to around the 16, 15, 14-yard line before on the near side, Matthew Martinez will touch it up. 11.02, just starting out the second quarter play, and uh, surprisingly, no score in this game and the weather had not really been seemingly all that helpful for this game, but the at least the mist has subsided to a certain degree. We're still around 50 degrees, and it's a little bit chilly out there. Other than that, not bad conditions. No, and we were down there earlier. I think Bowie's got to open their offense up. They've got to use the weapons downfield. They know they can run so far a little bit. Let's test the secondary. Same thing for McNeil. Saltz with Williams to his right-hand side, and it will be a handoff, though, to Gary. And Gary came out from the slot and joined Saltz and then got the handoff. He'll gain him maybe a yard of the play. They'll bring him up to the 16-yard line, going right to left. It's now second and nine. Gary came into this game leading receiver, but also the backup quarterback had 66 carries on the season, averaging 3.6 yards per carry and a few touchdowns on top of that. Two receivers right, one left hand side, two back set, Williams out right of Saltz will be back to pass now and he'll fling it out right hand side and it'll be lobbed and incomplete. Triple coverage around the 35 yard line and over the head of his intended receiver, uh, Dayron Calhoun, the senior has 19 catches on the year. A third and nine from their own 16 for the McNeil Mavericks. No score, 10-22 left in the first half. There's a good chance to back up the Mavericks and now get the field position you want and get off the field if you're the Bowie defense. Trips right-hand side, one left-hand side. A bit of motion there, and it's a keeper and a delayed draw by Saltz, and he has met and dropped. Maybe gains a yard the most on the play. Beavers in along with a host of other white jerseys for the Bulldogs. They'll bring up a fourth down and around eight to go. Interesting play call on a third and nine, Steve, to, trying to catch, on the keeper up the middle. Trying to catch Bowie, do that football judo. See if they could get the rush upfield and get a running quarterback, a lane in the middle there between the tackles to pick up the yardage. But Reagan Cooper, number five, would have none of that as well. Bryce Wilson, also the place kicker, is the punter as well from his own four-yard line. High snap back, still collected by Bryce, and it's a low-line driver. It's not a good kick. It hits it around the 36-yard line of the Mavericks, but it will take a McNeil bounce upfield near midfield, and that is exactly where it will be. First and 10 at the 50-yard line for Bowie going left to right. Best starting field position by far in this football game for Bowie. And throw the ball. You have the receivers on a night that you mentioned. Started out misty, but now you've got the advantage to throw a football because the McNeil Mavericks have been trying to bottle up Cruz Tello and Matt DeBella. We have not seen a lot of throws out of Tello. Trips left-hand side, one right, Rowan Wells near side. Going out against the grain, then Tello look, reverses field, and it goes to Rowan Wells, who's wide open! Catches it at the five, he'll go into the end zone from 50 yards out. Bowie strikes first, touchdown.
touchdown, Bulldog. I love this guy. I love this guy. Wide open, near side. Rowan Wells, my dude. Nobody within mm, an area code of 21. Perfect pass. Everybody trying to stop the run. Nobody home in the secondary. Well, what really set that up was the misdirection with the eyes. Tello looked to the left for a split second and been, went back to the right side of the field. He moved all the secondary over. Wells was wide open and Tello hit him in stride. Oh, man. Here's the Dajabi with the extra point coming up. Ryder Willie on the hold. The extra point is up and it is true. The Bowie Bulldogs finally, a team is on the board in this game with 9.25 left in the second quarter. Bulldogs 7, McNeil Mavericks nothing. You're watching the 6A Division II by district playoffs along the NFHS network. Back here along the NFHS network, D. Hanson, Steve Foster. Thanks for joining us here tonight for the Class 6A Division II by just a round of the Texas High School Football Playoffs. The Bowie Bulldogs up against the McNeil Mavericks here at the Kelly Reeve Sports Complex, the Palace on Palmer. Bowie Bulldogs get a score. The first score of the game, a 50-yard pass from Cruz Tello to Rowan Wells. Wells, fourth receiving score of the year, Tello's eighth passing score of the season and makes it 925 left here in the second quarter and Bowie with a 7-0 lead. Here's the kickoff Polito going left to right he goes out the back end of the end zone over the head of Aiden Taylor and that will bring up a first and 10 from their own 25 yard line for the McNeil Mavericks who have blanked two of their last three opponents. They they beat the Round Rock Dragons 17 to nothing. First win over Round Rock since 2009. They came off of a 31-0 win against the Cedar Ridge Raiders. And now, giving up their first points in five quarters against the Bulldogs, and now looking for their first points in the game. They've had a couple of instances where they could have scored, but unable to do so. The Bulldogs coming up big in a couple of instances on defense, and now it will be a handoff up the middle in the McNeil Mavericks going back to their bread and butter running the football and Joshua Williams will gain around two yards in the play up to their own 27 yard line. Shotgun, Soltz. Williams to his left and now Soltz back to wheel and deal. Goes down the deep right side of the field. He'll be incomplete. That is, again, Gerald Gary on the uh, receiving end of that one, and then Cole James blanking him. And so, so there's two ways of you covering. You have a couple of instances here where the crowd really wanting a P.I. on that one. Yeah, there's two ways of covering, and the crowd has to understand. If the defender lets the ball come into the offensive receiver's hands and knocks it out, that's not pass interference. That's just a different technique. Two receivers left hand side, two right ball on the nearest the far side hash. Again, going right to left, back to pass is Saltz. Here comes the pressure. He gets rid of it just in time. Is checked down, and it will be incomplete. Trying to get Deron Calhoun, 
who is well covered anyway, but the pressure on the outside caused that more than anything else. It'll be a fourth and eight and punting situation again for the Mavericks. You're exactly right, D. The pressure now getting to the timing. Even if you are a good, solid thinker, you have to think faster because you have a guy in Reagan Cooper, number five, coming off the corner. Bryce Wilson to kick it away from his own 13-yard line. Not real any pressure on the, bit on the left-hand side. Carmine Eli to receive. It hits the 50-yard line. Carmine Eli elects to let it go, and it will be touched up around the 43-yard line. That by even Evan Nieves and it will be first and ten for the Bulldogs looking to build on now a bit of momentum see we haven't seen that a lot actually it, the Manuel Mavericks took it at the very beginning of the game the big deep ball downfield right they had an, another opportunity to get it uh, right. a field goal had it blocked right but since then Bowie really getting the score on the board with their best starting field position at midfield right near that again right on the second offensive series after another stop on defense well uh, if something's good, more is better. Find some of these guys open downfield a little bit. Mathabella out right out of shotgun with Tello. Play action to him. It was another deep ball for Tello. Right hand side. He'll be caught at around the 11 yard line and down at the one yard line. Guess who? Rowan Wells. Deep ball, and he's nearing 100 yards in the game already. My dude. My dude. That was from. The 43 down to the one, I can do the math, 49 and seven, 56 yards. There you go. So now Wells with 106 yards in the game, which is exactly what he had last week against Lake Travis. Handoff goes right hand side and it will be a stop at the around the one yard line. Now on here the carry here for the Bulldogs and that will bring up a second down. Actually, back to the two. That's but here's where Cruz Tello now can play cat and mouse. He can act like he can hand it into. You have to respect the big size of Matt Bella. Then you can just run off tackle of that if you're Cruz Tello. But he's got to know when to say when. Short side of the field is where Rowan Wells is out left hand or right hand side. Come on, Eli left, and it will be a keeper by Tello. He goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs from two yards out. And the Bowie faithful, the few that are here across from us on their feet, looking to double up their score here against the McNeil Mavericks. Extra point pending. Could go up 14 to nothing with 7.33 left in the first half. Cruz Tello using Rowan Wells. A dangerous man downfield coming across the formation. you got to respect him. Cruz Tello follows his blockers into Jobby's the end Jobby's extra point is good. And now Bowie does have that 14 to nothing advantage. 7.33 left in the second quarter play here from Kelly Reeves. And you are watching the 6A Division II by District Playoffs along the NFHS Network. No score in the first quarter, but now back to back here for the Bowie Bulldogs as they now take a little bit more control of this budget playoff uh, game against the McNeil Mavericks. Up 14 to nothing after a two yard touchdown run by Cruz Tello. And with 7.33 left in the second quarter, Bowie now will kick it away from left to right. They'll go and be fielded at the just about a yard deep in the end zone. 
believe that's Aiden Taylor on the far side of the field. Goes up past the 15, near the 20-yard line. It is Taylor. I'll pick up first and 10 going right to left here for the McNeil Mavericks, who again came out like gangbusters in this uh, game and uh, were able to get things going. And now the defense for Bowie, after getting that block on the field goal, have really taken things in their own hands when the Mavericks are on offense. Yeah, I absolutely agree, D. And that's the momentum. You get Reagan Cooper back on that second level. He and Nick Beavers and company doing great. Interesting formation now. The short side of the field just trips to the right-hand side. The ball will be placed. Blocking his key on this little swing pass out right. Gerald Gary with the reception. Goes up field, maybe gains around two, two and a half. Near the 23-yard line. Second and seven coming up here for the Mavericks. How big of a drive is this for McNeil after they've got now uh, their punches were answered back by Bowie down by two scores? Well, I think it's big because now Bowie has some momentum. You know how that shift changes things in the game. Receivers left, one right-hand side now, and it will be a handoff right-hand side. Williams with the carry finds maybe a yard, and that will be a third and six to go here. Wyatt Barnes, big deal. He <laughs> remember if you, if you don't know anything about Bowie football the last year or two or three, Max Barnes, who was a heck of a running back, had his younger brother Wyatt probably trying to chase him all over the house. He understands how to tackle a good running back. He's got the length and the speed to do it. He's finding the edge now, breaks it back in. Here's a pass. Soltz lobs it right hand side. And it's a bit underthrown. Pull James on the coverage. That's on Gerald Gary again. No flags on the play. And again, the underthrow of the ball causes that to be uh, a little bit less of a so, concern as far as the PI. But you did not have James look back on the ball, which is the only real. People think situation. people think D that you have yes. to look back or it's pass interference. That is not true. I understand. True. What I'm saying to you is that you hear the fans booing. Oh, yeah. That's the reason why. Well, that's exactly the reason why. And they've done it for three times. I tried to explain the technique. There's technique that you At look. At time, why don't you go amongst <laughs> I don't need to talk to them. and let them know. Here comes the punt. It is blocked. And it will go upfield to run the 31-yard line. And because it was blocked, there is no roughing the kicker. And coming in on that block, the sixth block of the season, we had four coming in to Bowie, and uh, on that you have yet another block on that, and that was Reagan coming from Reagan Cooper, who was a question mark coming into this game based on injury, and now Bowie will have it first and 10 at the 32-yard line of the McNeil Mavericks, and now a timeout taken on the field. I don't think... The Mavericks had enough players on the field, and they will have to now burn a timeout here in the second quarter. True. True. Reagan Cooper with a great play on special teams, but limped off. Remember, he had the injury, but if he can keep uh, his team's momentum up and they get another touchdown here, again, no one's ever won a football game in the first half, but you can take and keep momentum to win in the second half and complete the win. Just as much it was, it was demoralizing for this Bowie team that went up against the Westlake Chaparrales a couple of games ago. Yes. To have Reagan Cooper, their stalwart, their lead in a lot of different defensive categories go out on essentially the first play of the game. That right. was a big blow. Yes. To have him out on the field, whether he's limping or not, is another, though, in the exact opposite direction, lift up for both special teams apparently and their defense. Yeah, he just blocked the punt. So first and 10 for the Bowie Bulldogs looking for more. 14 to nothing, 540 left in this second quarter. At the 32 yard line, it will be a handoff left hand side. Montebella finds some room. He'll get past the 25 upfield and down to the 21 yard line for a first down carry. And Montebella, each carry he has, he looks like he's running downhill even harder. Yeah, and that that action of Matabella getting the ball and going left and right will allow Cruz Tello to wheel and deal off of that same action when he chooses. Two right and two left. The two left are Carmon Eli in the slot and Rowan Wells play action. Here's Tello has a bit of pressure. He throws on the run, goes left hand side, and it will be 
out of bounds. It's still caught by <laughs> Carmine Eli. He's pretty excited about it because it was a great catch, but it was out of bounds. Yeah. Well, what I don't like is Rowan Wells in the back of the end zone, kind of a little gimpy. Tony Shannon really applying some incredible pressure there on the right side of the line. Rowan Wells is showing favorite, a little favoritism to that right ankle, but staying in the game. Handoff, Mothabella following blockers, has some room. 15-10, and he lunges to the five-yard line. First down and goal to go for the Bulldogs from the five. There's a flag, unfortunately, at the 24-yard yep. line. And that is in the vicinity of what would be considered a holding area. <laughs> and uh, But the blocking, very good well, by no, the Bulldogs. No joke, especially when you're holding. That makes it a little <laughs> bit easier. <laughs> okay. You got, now, me. You, Wells, you got me on that one. Rowan Wells having a bit of a conversation with his coaching staff. It's, again, he is testing out that ankle. And that is a big key here. The official's still conferring. There's is a it flag. offside? The flag is over at the 18 now. Yeah, I don't. I, they moved it. Let's see. What do we got? What do we have? Two fouls. Okay, holding against Bowie. Oh, it's two against the offense. Personal foul. Shot block against the Bulldogs on the same side of the field. Carmine. And that is going to be a 15 yard penalty. That makes sense why you would decline the holding call. Because you get a bigger. Because you get more yards. Penalty. Yeah, but that's okay. Listen, this ball still about where Bowie started. It's first down and now 20. First and 20, 25, 20. Let me see, do the math. 22? Because it's a spot foul? Yes, so. it is a spot foul. So we're at 33 to the 12. 22. 450 and counting down left here in the second quarter of play. Bowie Bulldogs leading 14 to nothing. It's second and 22 from the 33 yard line of the McNeil Mavericks. Should be 21. Going left to right. Offset eye, right hand side. Deep back is Mothabella. Pitch out right hand side. New team is Carmine Eli pitches it out back to Cruz Tello, who will run the football, then track down from behind. He'll get to the line of scrimmage. And nothing doing on that play. And the trickeration. Doesn't fool anybody for the McNeil Mavericks, especially the nose tackle and Joshua Abashir, uh, the junior, making the stop. If you get Abashir blocked, there is nothing but green pastures on the far side. It usually just takes one guy to disrupt the play there. Gotta get everyone blocked. But the ifs and buts, they were candies and nuts. We'd all have a great Christmas, right, Steve? Trips right inside, one left. Back is Tello on a third and 22. Goes to the middle of the field. Incomplete off the hands of his intended receiver, Rowan Wells, at around the 15 yard line, about four yards shy of the first. But had Wells been able to hold on to that football, he more than likely would have had a first down, but it just went in and out of his hands. That would have been a great catch. He was catchable, but it would have been also a great catch. So, Ro Rowan Wells now coming in to punt. Well, we've seen this before throughout the season. Wells also has played soccer throughout his Interest. career. He's at the 48 yard line of the McNeil Mavericks. Snap back. He will angle it right hand side. It's a bullet punt. And maybe they like his directional kicking because yes. it went out of bounds at the eight yard line inside the 10. And again, the buoy special teams coming up big after blocking a field goal from a 33 from a, about 33 yards out this time directional kick in the near side sideline it's coffin corners you can get there from Rowan Wells yeah no return inside no the return. 10 that's 92 yards that if you were going to get to Pater in 345 if you're a McNeil Mavericks fan so now it will be, for the first time I remember, Soltz under center. And he will hand it off a little bit of confusion as he gets that ball out to Gary. And Gerald Gary will get to the 10 for two yards. And Gary now is being used at different areas, Steve. He was primarily the receiver. Now he, we've seen him run the football a couple well, times. Well, what, what kind of got me, especially if you're that far deep in the backfield. He was in a three-point stance, yeah, D, not a two-point stance. You can't see anything that well back that deep. He's almost nine yards deep. 
And now a four-point stance. But Gary, again, has run the football a lot this year. So he is a multifaceted offensive player here for the McNeil Mavericks. And again, he gets the call. He'll well, gain around three <laughs> yards in the play, and that will still bring up around a third and around five to go here for McNeil at around their own 13-yard line. You can't get on all fours or three-point stance eight yards in the backfield because you can't see the defense. The defense can actually trick you, and you wouldn't even see them moving. Got to be in a two-point stance upright. Leading uh, rusher is Williams now. He is in the backfield along with Saltz. Receiver left-hand side moves first. Now Saltz will go the pass. Middle of the field around the 20-yard line. It's complete, and that will move the chains. That is Duran Calhoun with the reception. And what the McNeil Mavericks needed big time yes. is to get another round of downs. Here's Saltz again. Goes to the bubble screen right-hand side. It is caught, then wrangle around and down. Reagan Cooper in on the stop on the far side of the field. Well, that was an awkward way to fall down. Again, Cooper is slow to get up. He has been injured the last couple of games. In fact, he hasn't even played. That one complete to Gary. It's second and 11 on a one yard loss. Trips right hand side, one left. It's like he was Shut at Rodeo down. Austin. <laughs> Salt's back to pass now. No pressure, lobs it down the near side sideline, in and out of the hands at the 40 yard line. Coverage by Matthew Martinez. And again, the McNeil faithful clamoring for a PI. And there have been about three or four instances during the course of this game. They've been asking for that. That's Zach Christie, the sophomore, who was uh, the intended receiver, who has around 27 catches for 267 yards and three touchdowns on the year. Well, that was right in front of us. And I think he might have had a little bit of a claim, but both the defender and the receiver fighting to try to catch the ball. Splits now two left, two right. Shotgun again, Saltz looking left. He throws near side of the field incomplete and well under throwing its intended receiver on the near side. Saltz again, Matthew Martinez on the coverage and that was Christie, the intended receiver. They went right back to the well, but this time I think it was a bit of miscommunication between the uh, quarterback and the wide out. That brings up a fourth and 11 from their own 20 yard line and McNeil has now really had a hard time finding any traction on offense in the last three or four instances. Well, I'm going to tell you why, because Garrett Gibson, our guy number 62, created a train wreck in the middle of the daggum formation. Here is the punt, right-hand side by Bryce Wilson. Last time he had a block. This is now fielded by Carmine Eli. He has to come up on that one. A bit tricky for Carmine. He gets it at around the 46, brings it up inside of the 45, near the 43-yard line already in McNeil territory for the Bowie Bulldogs, first and 10 of the far side hash. Now, Steve, you have to know with 133 left in this first half, Bowie Guess did not win the coin toss. Uh, it will be McNeil's ball to start out the second half of play. So it would be helpful, I'm sure, in the highs of Jeff Abels to get a score going into the locker room of some kind. And they have two timeouts to work with. Excuse me, three. Two timeouts for McNeil. Now it'll be Tello. He spins it left-hand side. It is complete, I believe, on the far side of the field. It is to around the 38-yard line. And Bulldogs working the sidelines. That's Cole Craddock with the reception. I don't, and, uh, I don't know how you go out of bounds. Back in, the junior with his fifth reception of the season. I don't know how you go out of bounds, I D. I understand. I understand. And the, the clock still clock. goes. I, I Although, good timeout here. Timeout taken by the... <laughs> They're smart. Bowie Bulldogs will take it with them. Win 11 left here in the first half of play. Bowie Bulldogs leading 14 nothing, looking for more. A second and five coming up at the 38 yard line of the McNeil Mavericks. You're watching the 6A Division II by district playoffs along the NFHS network.
Quickly back to action here at Kelly Reeves Sports Complex. Dean Hanson joined by Steve Foster. 111 left here in the first half. Bowie Bulldogs up against the McNeil Mavericks. 14 to nothing. Second and five. Here's Tello. Pressure as he continues to hold on to the football, and then he'll be brought down for a sack at his own at the 43-yard line of the McNeil Mavericks. And great job on contain around Tello and good coverage downfield, which caused that sack more than likely. So, and now we'll bring up a third and 10. The clock runs at 48 seconds to go. Still got two Trip timeouts. Right side, one receiver out left-hand side. And Tello now will move Mothabella out from left to right with 35 seconds to go. Back is Tello, right-hand side, he rolls. Modest pressure, stays on his feet, goes down the right side, and it will be bobbled around, and I believe intercepted in the end zone. Rowan Wells, the intended receiver, and coming up with the INT advantageously. Maverick, Mavericks really needed that one was Cameron Green, his lead, team leading fifth INT of the season. It bobbled around a little bit, but he was able to hold on to it in the end zone. Now, McNeil. They have two timeouts remaining and with 24 seconds to go. It's first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. They need a score. T, I don't think they're going to get it here. They're going to get the don't ball, disagree. like you said. We'll see what they do in the play calling to start out. And that will set the precedent for the rest. Two backs, Soltz has Christie left hand side. And it will be a keeper by Soltz. And he'll run it up, pass to the 24 yard line, and it'll be brought down there. Second and six coming up, and I agree with that. That will probably be, yep, it will be the last play of the first half. And what a lot of people had a, a myriad of question marks going into this game, Steve. Yeah. Where these teams were, the trajectory of both of them. McNeil, the big story. They had not gone to the playoffs in 19 seasons. Winners of the last three, the upstart of their district. Meanwhile, the Bowie Bulldogs downtrodden to a certain extent 128 points given up in their last two contests and losers of the last two backing in so to speak in their district uh into the playoffs with the four and six mark nonetheless buoy battle tested and you know you brought it up multiple times through the course of both games against the lakes that this buoy team was battle tested from a playoff perspective and now you're seeing that come to fruition and they took the hit right out of the gate by the McNeil Mavericks, who came out slinging. Got a big ball downfield, an opportunity to score, unable to do so. Bowie bending but not breaking to a large extent. Then McNeil kept field position, got down the field again, tried to get the field goal from 33 yards out, blocked. No score in the first quarter. Bowie reverses momentum. Uncle Mo went all the way to Bowie's side, scored a couple of instances, especially because of they opened up the passing game. Got it down deep to Rowan Wells on a couple of instances. One scored the touchdown from 50 yards out. The next one from about 46 yards out set up the Cruz Tello two-yard touchdown run. We're at 14 to nothing. McNeil gets the ball to start of the second half of play, but Bowie has momentum going into half. Absolutely. Two blocks. I tried to recap it there. On you, one you, you absolutely did. Uh, that's why you sit underwater each week, <laughs> hold your breath for two minutes no so you can get no your, <laughs> increase your oxygen debt capacity. And you're right. Bowie has increased its playoff capacity because I call them playoff primers against Lake Travis, against Westlake. These are two teams you won't see until the caliber teams. You won't see until three and four deep into the playoffs. I, I understand you talk about Cibolo Steel. I'd rather play Cibolo Steel than Westlake any day. I'd rather take on Steel. <laughs> Both of these teams would rather take, take on, on Steel than nobody next week. Correct. So that's what we're looking at, and how many games have been won in the first half of play. Zero. If there's ever a team that can speak to that, it is the Bowie Bulldogs. Yes. I took a long-standing run in the first eight games of the season about how well the Bowie Bulldogs played the first half against the second half. They had outscored their opponents by a wide margin. In fact, you don't have to look any farther than their only two non-district games from teams in this district, okay. both Vista Ridge and Cedar Ridge. Let me get my point out before sure. you get here. Okay. They had led both of those games into the fourth quarter in unable hold-ons for victories. Now we'll see if they're able to learn from those moments okay. in the preceding portion of the season into the playoffs. Thank you, Counselor. 
<laughs> Here's the deal. Cruz Tello was playing in his first two varsity games starting as quarterback for the Bowie Bulldogs. Not the same 10 games in. The other thing is, don't forget in these playoff primers, the second half against Westlake, who always tries to run the score up. Lake Travis, who always gets depth, and their depth is deeper than most, did not do nearly as well in the second half. I'll take the four quarters, the second halves against Westlake and Lake Travis, that defense was there. That's what needs to show up in the second half again this week. Cruz Tello against this district, very different this time around than the first non-district games. We, we will see. I agree. He has all the experience under his belt to use that to his advantage. You know, it's just not him. There's a team around him also that have hopefully also learned from those moments throughout the course of the year there you going go. into this contest. Meanwhile, the McNeil Mavericks are down 14 to nothing. They have done a good job in their last three contests in taking control of those games early and often, but come into this contest not untested either. Sure. They took on the Vanderdrift Vipers sure. and for a little bit of that game also able to hold on but this is a team that's predicated by the run. We saw them go to it in the second quarter, especially to try to get back into the mix and have also pleaded their case with the officials on several deep balls down the field for some pass interference calls. But McNeil comes in now down 14 to nothing. What do they need to do going into the second well, half? Well, here's the to thing. Get the ball to start out. Here's the thing. If McNeil can't complete the ball and there's not going to be hankies on the field because of the type of coverage that the corners have on their quick receivers downfield, then the only success really that's coming is by the run. Bowie has defended and guarded the run extremely well to date. Right. So, what does McNeil need to do? So, so I don't know if McNeil has a lot of op options except perfect the run better because clearly they've got nothing in the passing game. And we mentioned, or you mentioned, I should say, the passing for McNeil is touchdown to interception ratio is pretty much a one-to-one -one deal. They don't have a big advantage or a disadvantage in the passing game. So what makes them go, as mentioned, is the run. It, if Bowie can maintain their leverage against the run that they've done. It's going to be very hard for McNeil to get back in the game unless they figure out some way to pass the ball quickly downfield and maybe get some penalty flags on the field here. Not Kelly the only Reese. variable that McNeil has leaned on during the course of this year though, Steve, and I mentioned it while we were off air leading into the contest. They have now forced, going into this contest, uh, 26 turnovers on their defensive side of the football. So the turnover is always the magician that can like curtail the momentum of any team you go up against. And they had four turnovers forced last week against Cedar Ridge, and that's something they have been adept to through the course of the entire season. Okay, let me, let me take that. Even when you get a turnover, if it's not a scoop and score, you saw a defense from Bowie that did not bend and break. You saw them bend even when McNeil got into the red zone. So a turnover, yes, takes away the opportunity from Bowie, but does not necessarily translate into points you know, for it McNeil. Never do, you know, Steve, I'm not saying either right. way that it translates to anything. Of course. I'm giving McNeil some props on what they've done well this season. You've talked about the running game and how it's been stopped to this point by the Bowie Bulldogs. Right. Totally get it. The variable that has also not been broached that much in this particular contest so far, because they have not been able to do it in the right. first half, Correct. is turn the ball over. Or and that's something that the that's right. Mavericks have done through the course of the year that could turn the tide in this game if they're able to take advantage of it. Totally understand they have to take advantage of those turnovers. Correct. But if you're able to force them in the first place, that is momentum for McNeil in in its, in its infancy. Clearly, if they can't take advantage of it, then it doesn't mean anything. Correct? Well, that's kind of what I was getting at. I know. But, but because no turnovers really, except at the end of the game here, uh, and in the half, what but was no the time yes. on that really right. to, to speak to of. take advantage. Right. Okay, we're going to take a break. We come back. We'll look at the bands. There's about six minutes, 15 minutes left before we will start on the second half of play here from Kelly Reeves Sports Complex. The Bowie Bulldogs have the advantage, 14 to nothing here against McNeil. Again, you are watching the 6A Division II by round of the Texas High School Football Playoffs on the NFHS Network.
about a minute to go before uh, we have the second half kicked off between the McNeil Mavericks and the Bowie Bulldogs. Steve Hansen joined by Steve Foster. Here along the NFHS network, a lot of halftime uh, scores also across both 25-6A, 26-6A as they are pitted up against each other. Lake Travis Cavaliers against the Vandergrift Vipers. Seven to three is the score that I was most updated by for the Cavaliers leading the number four team in the state. A lot of people circled that one at Monroe Stadium, Steve, and realized that one could be one of the best, maybe the best opening round game in the state of Texas in the Dubai District Round. And the winner of that one will take on Johnson and the New Braunfels Unicorns that being played at Hero Stadium right now. Like Travis is 4 0 all time against Vandergrift. Never lost against them. Vandergrift, meanwhile, fifth consecutive 10 win season. They haven't even gotten to the postseason yet and reached that at a 10 0 record. And uh, you also have the Round Rock Dragons taking on the Westlake Chaparrales. That is a 14 2, was it 3 advantage for the Chaps? And last uh, check there at Chaparral Stadium. Uh, and then your other game going on, Vista Ridge in Tripping Springs. The Tigers number 15 in the state at 8-2. The Rangers at 7-3. And, and the Mavericks now coming out the field from right to left uh, below us here on the home side of the field. And uh, Steve, did you tell me, I think it was 14 to nothing, uh, Tripping Springs with the advantage on Vista Ridge. So across the board, you have three teams in 25 uh, the 26-6A that have the 14 points on the board, including the Bowie Bulldogs lead 14-0 here at the Killer Reef Sports Complex against the McNeil Mavericks. The Mavericks have never lost to Bowie. They've played each other five times. The last time they met up against each other, though, uh, it was a long, long time ago. That was um, back in 2007. And here at the Kelly Sports Sport Complex, in a non-district battle, McNeil won that one 34 to 30. And um, now you have Bowie, though, a much more poignant situation for both teams. By just round of the Texas High School football playoffs to advance to area with a two touchdown lead. But now the ever important second half will be at our feet and the Bulldogs who lost the coin toss, McNeil elected to defer, will receive the ball to start out the second half of play. Down by two scores. Bowie in their away white tops and gray bottoms, the black letters numbers and red and black helmets. McNeil in the black tops, the white bottoms, white letters numbers and green helmets. Kickoff from right to left is fielded by Aiden Taylor from his own 10. He goes past the 15 to the 20 and near the 25 yard line. First and 10 going left to right. It will be the McNeil Mavericks to start out. First and 10. And Braylon Thomas down on the kick coverage team, tripping him up, D. Ball probably, I think they're going to do the 25, so it's kind of a wash. You, want, you like the Could've excitement, the but you like the excitement sure. of trying to bring the ball back and getting a, an explosive play, but it looks like. There well, could be. Now, I mean, McNeil's down 14 nothing, but they've got lots of energy on their sideline below us. You can tell they are up uh, against the edge of their seat. And, of course, you'd imagine Bowie has also gotten their hands up in the air. And the towels you can see also flailing around on the far side of the field. I'm not sure what the white cap and <laughs> everything is talking Coach, about. Coach Hermes. Coach Hermes. Is the head coach for the McNeil Mavericks in his fourth year having a discussion. Here with Harris, referee. I'd say his first name, but they did not give it to us. We're looking at the clock. Time is wrong. We're looking at time is wrong. I didn't hear a uh, what the time should be. Right. Though. So it's 11:55 as it sits. First and ten from their own. I mean, it's got a, it's a 25 yard line. First to ten for McNeil, and they gave a second back. So maybe maybe the time is wrong, and they may not keep it on the board. Right. They gave a second back, and we'll see if that ends up changing. Handoff, running play for McNeil, right out of the gate, and it's a good one. Wyatt Barnes finally, along with uh, Braylon Thomas, able to track down the running back and Williams, who gets past the 40 to the 41 yard line, and that's just what the doctor ordered for 
McNeil, again, averaging around 4.2 yards per carry and around 150 yards per contest. Here's now a deep ball flag thrown down the left side of the field. It's incomplete. And that intended for Christie on the far side of the field. Coverage by Matthew Martinez. The flag is on the near side of the field, the 43-yard line of McNeil, right in front of their sideline. Should be an offside. Shot block defense? No, offsides. Offsides. Okay. Offsides defense. Oh, I thought I saw him do this. No, no. <laughs> he's, he's a short, squatty okay. white cap, but he get, didn't do it like that. I all right. Christie out, left-hand side, two receivers right, including Gerald Gary. Back to pass is Sultan, and he is blown up. Wyatt Barnes comes in for the sack at the 39-yard line. A loss of nearly eight on the play. The Bulldogs' defense comes up big. They'll bring up a second and long from the 38 for the McNeil Mavericks. Wyatt Barnes, about as fast as his brother Max, but he tackles. Max likes to run into the end zone. Wyatt likes to knock things down. A great start to this second half and third quarter for the McNeil Mavericks, D, but right there, running up against a wall. Barnes, fourth sack of the season. Only a junior. Four wideouts, two split to each side. It's second and 13 officially. In motion from left to right, it will be a throw out left-hand side, and that screen was blown up by the defense, which caused Saltz to throw it into the ground. Williams was the intended receiver, and I don't see any flags. Did you say there was a – okay, I thought you – I no, thought sir. your arm go up. No, okay. sir. <laughs> but what I will say is McNeil trying to mix up the plays – Take advantage of the pressure, but right there, the pressure gets to the quarterback sooner than the play to develop, and Schultz, Schultz just had to throw the ball but away. A wise choice. Yes, a very wise choice. Trips right hand side. That's the long side of the field. Schultz again back to pass. He's forced that way. Throws it deep down the left sideline, and it will be incomplete. And Christie, the intended receiver, down the far side sideline. Matthew Martinez on the primary coverage. Ryan. True Blood also came in from his strong safety position, and that will bring up a fourth and 13. So, McNeil, a custom and average starting field position, got a good run to start out yes. their offensive series. And since then, though, that Wyatt Barnes sack really completed, just eradicated the tone that was set by that long run. Here is the kick. And it will be short, hits at the 31-yard line, and then it will be caught by McNeil at the 29-yard line. Coming underneath that one was Cole Haga. And Bryce Wilson, the sophomore, has been erratic. He's had some nice punts in that one. Not, not quite as good, but still buoy. In their own territory, they're on 29, first and 10, the first offensive series for the Bulldogs. So they answered the call to start out the third quarter. We'll see if the offense can continue the trend that they were able to end the second or first half with. And Matabella gets the carry, and we'll take that all day long if you're a Bulldog fan. Six yards, right-hand side. Gets past 35, knows the football, 36-yard line, far side hash, second down. Yeah, and what that does is calms down. The offense lets Cruz Tello settle in, and it gets the offensive line pushing. Now McNeil needs to push back. McNeil running a 3-3 stack, very similar to what Bowie's been running ever since Jeff Abels took over 22 years ago. Here's a keeper up the middle by Tello. He lowers the left shoulder. He's very close to the first down marker at the 40, but he's just shy, I believe, by a yard at the 39-yard line. The ball in the middle of the field and coming in and able to wrangle Tello down to the ground was Darren Powell, the defensive end, the senior. Third and one coming up. Well, a lot of options for Cruz Tello. This is where he's got to make good choices against this defensive line. Tello Matabella to his right will keep it right inside. He will sidestep his way and then get brought down from behind, but still gain two on the play for first down up to the 42-yard line. And I thought there might have been a little bit too much dancing there for Tello, whether he was going to make it to the line of scrimmage, but he was able to churn those legs. He's a strong runner. Yes, and a good pursuit inside out by the McNeil defensive front. 
to make that a short gain, but enough for the first down for the Bowie Bulldogs. 8.38 counting down, left there in the third quarter of play. Bowie first and 10 from their own 42 yard line. Handoff goes right hand side and met and dropped. No gain in the play is Mothabella. And again, the defense here for McNeil. You can see that it's a bit more active, Steve. And they're definitely trying to make a statement here. That was Caden Patty with the stop. That's a second and 10 coming up. And Bowie again leading 14 to nothing here in the third quarter. Shotgun. Tello with Matabella to his right. Balls to the far side hash. Two receivers right, one left hand side. Here's Tello, flings it. On a crossing route, that's intended for Carmine Eli at the 45-yard line. Good enough for a first down. Leaping for that one was uh, excuse me, was Carmine, but let him a bit too much. Incomplete, third and 10 from their own 42 here for Bowie. Crowd getting rowdy here below us on the home side for McNeil. The mist has gone away. It's about 50 degrees. No real wind to speak of. And now it'll be Tello on a third and 10. Rolling out right inside with pressure. Has to get rid of it. It's intercepted! Far side sideline at the 42 yard line and bringing it up field is Aiden Taylor with the INT. And McNeil has done it all season long. They forced their 27th turnover of the year and bringing it up field and they're going to mark it at the 30 excuse me the 45 yard line and the sophomore intercepts the junior to turn the tide to a certain degree and give McNeil great starting field position at the Bowie 45 down by two scores and that one just throwing the stance but great defense there catch that one if you can oh the wild Maverick in a run right hand side. Finding the edge is Gerald Gary. He gets to the 35, all the way inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. Big gain of the play, and McNeil now quickly to the line, gaining momentum. Trips right hand side, same play. Gary finding the edge right hand side, tracked, and then runs it back in. Reagan Cooper wrangles him down on the near side hash. Gets him down at around the 32-yard line. Still a reasonably good game the way this McNeil Maverick offense has been going. The last couple of runs have been just what they needed. Gain of six. Another carry by Gary, and he gets met at the 20. Wyatt Barnes brings it back. Whistles sound. Gain around two to the 20. And now calms things down to a small level. Third down and two coming up at the 20 yard line for the Mavericks. Again, Gary staying in. Back to pass, looking for the middle of the field and it will be incomplete. Christie, the intended receiver at the 15 yard line. It's now fourth down with two yards to go. And imagine that with the season on the line. I think it's offsides. No? Oh, did we have a flag? Okay, I didn't even see the flag. I'm sorry. You're right. You're exactly right, Steve. Just enough cadence change You're right. to get this ball to the 15. So that, because there are only two yards needed, the five yards gives McNeil the first down. First and 10 for the 15. A buoy looking for their first score of the game. Gary stays in. He will run it. Breaks it back in, lowers the shoulder, and then brought down from behind by Braylon Thomas at around the 10 to the 9 yard line. Nothing a gain fancy. Of six of the play. I mean, it's the same <laughs> run to the right, by the way. They're running to the same side. But of the you line. can't fall asleep backside. Here's Gary again. He quickly gets it to the run. Braylon Thomas from behind, and losing the football. The ball is loose at around the 8. Yeah, he did I lose the football. That, I believe that. Uh oh, and he Boone fumbled. And he is going to be recovered by the Bulldogs. Coming up with it for the Bowie Bulldogs is De uh, Derek Neptune with the fumble recovery. This so with all that said and done, the Bowie Bulldogs once again, as they have all game long, 
have seen the McNeil Mavericks drive to the end zone and made a pivotal stop, this time a turnover. And I think that ball was stripped by either Reagan Cooper or Wyatt Barnes. One of those two got their hands in there, and the ball came back. Neptune's first fumble recovery of the season, and then Bowie will now run the football right-hand side. Uh, Matabella will get to around the nine-yard line for a two-yard gain. The Bowie Bulldogs on the season are a perfect eight of eight fumble recover, fumble forced to fumble recovery. You don't see that every day at all. And now we'll look to counter the interception, which turned into no points for the McNeil Mavericks, and see if what they what Bowie can do now as Tella will keep it. Is in trouble though. He's at the five and brought down around the six yard line. And now that you have McNeil saying they turned the ball over, but the no. uh, officials no. say the ball is dead and Bowie will yeah. have it second, or excuse me, third down. Second down. It's third down. I was all right. And nine to go. A loss of one. Right here, Cruz Tello tonight is going to be deadly after he gets fakes to his other rushers. There, the, this Maverick defense has swallowed up just the keeper by Cruz Tello. That's not where he's going to make his money. He's going to make his money tonight with his arm and close to the goal line. Abashir, Shannon, and Powell have been stalwarts of this three-man front play action. Matabella flinging it right inside. Coming back on the ball and incomplete at around the 33-yard line was Carmine Eli, the intended receiver. And very good coverage downfield. Breaking that back up and coming back in was the free safety Christian Reyna. The senior for McNeil, and now will bring up a fourth and nine. Bowie did make the stop defensively, but McNeil also stiffening up. Did not cause any other harm there as far as the turnover is concerned. Right. Both teams have to be satisfied to a certain degree. Under five to go here in the very uh, adventurous third quarter, and now a flag should come in as Polito gets got rid of that football on the punt and he got waylaid and that should be a roughing the kicker it's fourth and nine we'll see what variety this is I, I think it's running into the kicker but I can't determine well let me get my binoculars out because I can see the uh, clear hand signals here from our referee and he's waltzing over to Bowie which makes me think that it's not roughing the kicker right but i still would kick it again with the five absolutely. yards absolutely it is what? so they did not want her to do a re-kick wow okay they decline buoy declines the uh penalty and the ball will be placed at the 41 yard line on a fair catch by taylor Neal, first and 10 at the 41 yard line of the Bulldogs, still down 14 to nothing, 448 left here in a incredibly uh, entertaining third quarter compared to our first quarter, especially. Here's the good thing you have faith in your defense if you don't need to re kick on a short field. For Pooey, it is. I agree. Trips right hand side for McNeil, going left to right. Soltz now will take his time, look over to the sideline. And he'll maneuver Williams from right to left. And a handoff goes to Williams. He finds the edge left-hand side. Late hit at the end of that play against Braylon Thomas. No call. And the ball will be placed at the 36-yard line on a five-yard gain. Clock will run at about four and a half to go here in the third quarter. Helmet comes off for the rusher there, as you mentioned. Williams. Williams. Yep. So he's got to come out for a play. Joshua Gaten has not really seen much playing time. He's also a capable back. A keeper, though, on the zone read option there, Soltz, who is awkwardly brought down. And Reagan Cooper is, I mean, he is trying his best. There's a flag of the play at the end of that run, but Cooper, again, it's on the ground because he can barely put any pressure on that right leg. Steve, I don't even know how he's capable of making tackles, but he continues to be a huge component of this defense for and he's going to be helped off the field. Yeah. I'm not sure what this penalty is either. The flag has been moved to the 35-yard line. 
Personal foul face mask against McNeil. I saw the helmet huh. off of Nick Beavers. So that's where the, maybe the hand went up into that region right. and Correct. Brought, it, brought it off. Okay. Correct. Well, that's a 15-yard penalty. And, in fact, majority of the penalties, the big ones, have gone against Bowie. This is the first big one I can remember against McNeil, which they need now desperately to get back into this ball game down 14 to nothing. 4-10 left in the third quarter. They go back to the 50-yard line, the second and 19. Here's Saltz back to pass. He flings it left-hand side, deep down the left sideline. Coming back on it, flag flies, and Christie finally able to make the reception around the 20-yard line. P.I. against the defense will more than likely be... Oh, wait uh, a minute. This may be offense. We'll see. We'll oh, see. wow. Wow. Well, the fans for McNeil will not like that oh, at my, all. No, my no. They will not. No, they will As not. They've been clamoring for PIs the majority of that second quarter going to the third, <laughs> and that's exactly what's <laughs> happening. They're bringing this ball back, and it's a pass interference against McNeil. You hardly see offensive pass interference. Never. You hardly see it. And listen, you've let two good teams tonight really just do what they can do on a football field. Let. I let agree. let them I go agree. down the field and I, figure out how I they think, can. I think that should have just been left, no call. left right. completely. Understood. Great play. Saltz has been pretty on point with his passes. Yes, in this I was, game, I was by fixing the way. to say. Uh, yeah, his yeah. deep balls look yeah. good. The accuracy is not. Uh, We're the, talking about the, sophomore. Right. right, slinging it. Two right, one left. McNeil abandoning uh, Gerald Gary as the primary back at this point. Here's Saltz now. He'll go deep down the left side. That's almost the same play. And now we'll have another flag. Christie covered by Matthew Martinez. And I imagine that we're going to have, because of the hollow blue on that last call, this will go the opposite direction. So, it gets Bowie. So here's the deal. The technique. The gets Bowie. The technique. Automatic, automatic first down. That was a second and 34, by the way, on that last play, which will be nullified on the PI against Bowie. Yeah, so it'll be 15 yards from the 35, which will put them to midfield, being the McNeil Mavericks. Where we started before. Where we started. What, what the technique of letting the ball drop into the receiver and then knocking it out of his hands is you do not see the ball coming. So you really can't make the play that you can make if you ride in the pocket. After all that said and done, we're back at first and 10 at the 50. Okay. For McNeil, which is how we started this whole thing. And now a handoff goes left hand side. Williams with a nice carry, but after he found some edge, he got wrangled around a bit. I thought he was going to be down at the line of scrimmage, but he was able to sit on his feet for about two yards on the far side of the field and uh, gain a little bit of momentum. Ryan Trueblood just shot through there, and you can see, well, if you're able to watch, uh, that. He almost had him down, but that knee did not go down apparently. No, and, uh, and True Blood really needs to needs, needs to treat him a little more rude to ensure that the, the carrier is down. Great effort on the run. Second and seven now. Ball in the Bowie territory at the 47 far side hash going left to right. Second and seven. Under three to go here in the third quarter. Here's Soltz going deep around the right side, and it will be incomplete at the 20-yard line. In and out of the hands. You had a couple of options there. I think Gerald Gray was the intended receiver. Now, he's a bit gimpy, also favoring that right leg. You have Braylon Thomas in on the coverage, along with Cole James, is also coming up a little bit lame. And you've got all kinds of players now fighting through some nicks and and bruises that's the nature of playoff football well really a, another good pass where there was opportunity uh, i mean he's thrown some dimes in pressure seven is salt so now handed off left hand side williams on a third and seven this is four down territory yes. for mcneil yes and mcneil gets a good run on that one all the way to the 42 yard line of the bulldogs two yards shy and a fourth and two the mavericks can pick a lot from that playbook well, they're going for it. So this of is, course, this is <laughs> you know, it's just what's the play going to be? You have a quarterback that can run, D. Soltz has had a couple of moments where he has. And now the ball is bobbled around. And because of that, Soltz is going to be met and dropped. Just let him go. Just let him go. The uh, whistles will fly. But because of that bobbled snap, the timing is completely 
thrown off. The Bowie Bulldogs coming in, and Aiden Solis was the original defender to come in from the weak side. Made the stop, wrapped up Soltz, and that will drive McNeil off the field offensively for a turnover on downs. And the Bowie Bulldog defense has been spectacular in this game. Yes, they have. And right now, maybe you try something that you've had in that second quarter, which is that pass downfield to Rowan Wells. Two left one right now, and it will be a keeper by Tello. Wisely stays on to the left-hand side, and then wisely tiptoes his way out of bounds. Does not take the hit at around the 44-yard line, and that will be should be enough, just enough, for a first down. We'll see if they will move the chains voluntarily or not. They do, and they on will. your command. It's oh, no. 10-yard game. Yep, yep. <laughs> you, you didn't know because you looked far side where the chain crew is, chain gang as they call them. First and 10, though. 201 left here in the third quarter, and a carry Matabella left-hand side. He lowers that right shoulder following blockers to the 40 to the 39-yard line. That will be a gain of five yards to the play for the Bulldogs. Second and five coming up. Leading 14 to nothing, and we are edging closer to, to about a minute and a half left in the third quarter of play. After all, it's all, we, man, it's all kinds of things happening in this third quarter. There's no, <laughs> no scores that happened in this third quarter. But a lot of action. A lot of action. Here is a keeper by Tello. I went with Martha Bella on that one. Because of that, Tello was able to also inch his way close to that first down marker. He's yeah. shy by about two yards. Good call there. And he'll get to the 36-yard line. He'll bring up a third down. And Cruz Tello now, because of the success of Montebella, number 24, the running back, you have to honor when you hand the ball out and at least show the ball to your rusher. Then the quarterback can then make the decision. Keeps McNeil's defensive front at bay. Tello's decision making throughout the course of this game on the runs have served him well. And this time Montebella will get the carry right up the middle. The blocking, spectacular, a five-yard gain. Matabella moves the chains on the carry. What I was getting to is that Tello, but he was only averaging around three yards per carry, Steve. And a lot of that had to be predicated by the fact that he was not doing well on the ground throughout the course of the beginning of the season. But now he is maturing and understanding when he should run and not. Absolutely. Trips right-hand side, one left, and that is Rowan Wells has been quiet here in the third quarter play after a big second quarter. Tello out of the shotgun has Matabella to his left. Trips right hand side. Cole Craddock has seen some action along with uh, Carmine Eli and Owen Ball. And it will be a keeper again by Tello. Eludes tacklers, goes up the middle, and he will be very close to a first down carry. It's nine yards, just shy of the 22 yard line. Make him at the 23. The marker is in between those hash marks, by the way. And now that will also be the very last play of the Bidrish round of the Texas High School football playoffs here at Division II 6A of the third quarter. And from Kelly Reeves Sports Complex, the Bowie Bulldogs have the same lead and score as they had at half. 14-0 on the McNeil Mavericks. On to the fourth we go. You're listening and watching here uh, the 6A Division II Bidrish playoffs along the NFHS network. We go here from Hill Reeves Sports Complex. This is the Class 6A Division II. By just round of the Texas High School Football Playoffs along the NFHS Network. Dee Hanson joined by Steve Foster. Appreciate you also joining us on 1027 FM ESPN Austin. Doing so. Bowie Bulldogs taking on the McNeil Mavericks. 
Bulldogs leading 14 to nothing now. First, in, uh, second and one from the 23 yard line of McNeil. Try to run it left hand side. They do so, but the ball comes loose on the carry. The first play of the fourth quarter, and the Bulldogs lose it for their second turnover of the game. Fumble recovery on the far side of the field. McNeil really needs this one. Christian Reyna with the fumble recovery, his first of the year. But again, this is now 13 fumble recoveries on the season for the McNeil Mavericks. They've been doing all season long, and they now flip the script. First and 10th, their own 18, still down by two scores. We had no scores in the first quarter, no scores in the third quarter. Let's see what happens here in the fourth quarter. McNeil going right to left now. That's south to north as you're looking on the home side of the field. First and 10 from the road, 19. Soltz winds up, goes deep down the middle of the field and will be incomplete. Well under thrown of his intended receiver. Yet two res defensive backs on the coverage. Underneath and over the top. They throw the flag on a PI of some kind. Deron Calhoun, the intended receiver. There's two flags too, one in the backfield. and yeah, one All the way back <laughs> at the 10, you're exactly right. So there could be two fouls here on Bowie. You'll get a choice of one. One's at midfield. These officials have been busy, but I feel like they've been pretty on point for the most part, Steve. And they're going to move the ball no matter what. Oh, so you got the roughing pass. the passer against Bowie and a PI. Either way, it's 15. Automatic first down. You move the ball up to the 34-yard line, first and 10 for McNeil. Still in their own territory. We are just getting underway here in the fourth quarter. No scores here for McNeil. Two back set. Soltz out of the shotgun. Back to pass. No real pressure. Lobs it deep down the middle of the field. Leaping forward and catching it around the 34-yard line. It's Williams, the running back. Deep into Bowie territory for the reception. His eighth overall reception of the year. Goes for a deep bomb, and McNeil now quickly to the line. Back to pass, Saltz again, looking deep down the left sideline, and it will be caught at the seven yard line. Christie with coverage all over him from Matthew Martinez on the near side sideline is able to get that ball, and now McNeil is in business. First down and goal to go from the eight yard line of the Bulldogs. Under center now is Soltz. Deep man Williams. Two receivers right, two left, and now we have all kinds of confusion, and I believe a timeout's gonna be taken by Bowie. No, McNeil. No, by McNeil. <laughs> now, in a game that's only decided by two touchdowns, Steve, and you're knocking on the door with the fourth quarter, touchdown or timeouts are at a premium still. You use one of the three that you have, two timeouts remaining here for the Mavericks. But the most important aspect of that, and I, I think I know why you're cringing to a certain degree, you have all the momentum going the, going into that play. You, you had you all the momentum. It. You and just you, stopped it. And you stopped it. And, and again, listen, this is a head coach that's been with the program in Vandegrift as their defensive coordinator. He understands winning. You, you're under Drew Sanders. You're going to understand winning <laughs> to the nth degree. He right. under, but that's not on – he probably is as, just as upset as anybody well, else would be. So the idea is – Get something for this timeout, meaning oh, positive yeah. yards yeah. or a score. Yeah. This point, Bowie has been able to repel any effort for McNeil in their fourth time in the red zone. Yes. To get points. This is their fourth, at least. The last three have not yielded anything on the scoreboard. Saltz now will wait a bit. He has Christie to his left. Matthew Martinez on him. Now, right-hand side, you have Gerald Gray, Gary, and it'll be a handoff. Here's Williams, breaks it back in, and then it'll be stopped and dropped by Braylon Thomas, who has been all over. The it's your free safety coming in and making these defensive stops on the run game, and that will be nearly a yard, if that. It's about three. So you've got to get some type of tally if you're McNeil here. Second down and goal to go from the seven now. High snap back, one-handed, kept 
by Soltz. Tries to find the edge left hand side, stays on his feet, lowers the right shoulder, then he finally brought down on the near side sideline around the seven yard line. I mean, Matthew Martinez in on the stop. People are throwing their bodies all over the place here for the Bulldog defense. And I mean, Soltz is also not shy at all. No. Tried to but turn the corner nothing, near side to us. Nothing. Now he could have easily also been stopped in the backfield. He gains two officially. Third down and goal to go from the five. McNeil looking for their first score of the game. Soltz back, throws it to the right corner of the end zone. And it will be caught. Touchdown, McNeil. Gerald Gary finds the end zone. Touchdown, Mavericks for their first time with 9.58 left in the fourth quarter. Fade route in the north end zone right corner and that ball was thrown perfect by the sophomore over the defender. And again, the technique, you can play it, but you don't get to see the football. The extra point is up and good by Wilson and just like that, the lead cut in half. McNeil Mavericks convert on the turnover and get in for seven overall with 958 left in the contest it's a narrow margin now 14 to 7 Bowie Bulldogs leading against the McNeil Mavericks you're watching the 6A Division 2 by district playoffs along the NFHS network Action here from the Keller Reeves Sports Complex. Dee Hansen joined by Steve Foster. Uh, this uh, facility, affectionately known as the Palace on Palmer, has now really hosted a whale of a game already here in the bottom round of the Texas High School Football Playoffs here in Class 6A. A 14-7 affair. Yeah, you can imagine by that score, it'd be predicated by defense. And you'll be right. And to this point, though, the Bowie defense had held that serve for the entire game. But this time, finally, McNeil Mavericks break through and able to get a score on the board. Their first of the game, a five-yard touchdown bound for Saltz to Gary. Saltz with his 11th touchdown thrown of the season, the sixth reception in the end zone for Gary. The kickoff from right to left for the McNeil is feeling the six yard line brought up by Matthew Martinez. He's past the 20. He's at the 30. 35 40. Near side sideline midfield and great return by Matthew Martinez for the Bowie Bulldogs. They're going to mark this at the 50 yard line first and 10 for the Bulldogs. That's what you want to do. Respond. This game has been back and forth. Boom, boom, Bam, bam. Both of these teams. I didn't know where you're going with that one, but I was, <laughs> I was happy to hear what we're getting. I know you like your song, sir. Here we go. First and 10 for the midfield area. Near side hash going left to right. Bulldogs up 14 to 7. Looking to hold on to things. But McNeil right back in this one. At home, 949 left in the fourth quarter. Pistol formation. Here is Tella. And he will... End around, fake it. Here's Tello looking deep. Now he'll keep it because coverage is great. And then he'll be brought down from behind and tripped up at around the 46 yard line. The coverage was so good after all that trickeration that Tello had to tuck it in. He's brought down from behind by Tony Shannon. You got to give the defensive end a lot of credit there for McNeil. But still a four yard gain for the Bowie Bulldogs at the 46 yard line of the Mavericks. I'll take that. Both teams played that play as best as they could. Here's Tello out of the shotgun, Matabello right hand side in Rowan Wells near side. Here is Tello on a zone read keeper and he will be met and dropped for about a half yard loss. 
And you can feel the McNeil Mavericks now feeling momentum shifting their way, flexing a bit on defense. And now a third down and seven, the biggest of the game more than likely. The clock runs at around 8.52 left in the fourth quarter. Bowie clinging to a 14-7 lead. Trips left-hand side. Roland Wells near side to the right. Matabella, he is to the right-hand side of the shotgun. And it's an end around. Carmon Eli goes nowhere. And he is met and dropped for a loss. Back to the original line of scrimmage at the 50-yard line. A lot of trick plays towards the end. And Tony Shannon makes the tackle. Tackle for a loss, his fifth of the season. And Bowie, who had great starting field position at midfield, is unable to do anything with it. And McNeil gets the score and the stop with 8.02 and counting down, down by seven. Here is Polito from the 35. Pressure up the middle, just gets it away. And it's a line driver, fair caught at the 12-yard line by Aiden Taylor, the sophomore. He'll be at the 12, first and 10, there for McNeil. And they're down again by seven with 7.50 to go. And with two timeouts for the deal. Yeah, I just I just think there's an advantage of Rowan Wells downfield and Carmen Eli downfield. Side to side, east west, it just gives the McNeil Mavericks the opportunity to pursue, and they're doing it some well. Shifting, a lot of handing off from different players. Yeah. We'll see if that comes into question. Soltz now high snap back is able to hand off, but Garrett Gibson blows it up all the way back. Inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. And I think Gibson also is the one that's yeah. down on the ground as yeah. he lowered that right shoulder on Williams. And yeah. they'll stop the play here and the trainers rush in. Yeah, so most likely Sam Segura, number 50, will come and play that middle position. But that's we're a loss see of three and a brilliant inside move by Gibson. Destroyed that play, but on top of that causes him to be on the ground at this moment at least we'll see. oh he's back up this well, guy is indestructible he is unbelievable he's gonna have to come up on one play he's unbelievable i mean garrett gibson I i've loved and you called him out a year ago d i, did. I, I gotta give it I to did. you you said hey this guy is kind of tight in the middle here doing a lot of things garrett gibson disrupts half the plays and Solomon Purdue, his coach, by the way, across that line, comes out and brings him on and is super pumped after that last play, a loss of three. McNeil, though, with possession, empty backfield. Trips left, two right. Here's Soltz, delay draw up the middle, and he will have some room. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, brought down from behind around the 40-yard line by Braylon Thomas. But it was going to mark at the 42-yard line on the keeper. Sultz had tried that majority of this game, had not been successful, but this time he certainly was. On a second and third team, blows that up. Mavericks back to the line again. Sultz flings it out left inside. Aiden Taylor has the, the reception at the 40, goes to down the near side sideline, and they're going to mark him all the way into Bowie territory and finally stop. I have yet to see anybody Where's the ball? move the ball where it needs to go at the 46-yard <laughs> line okay. of the Bulldogs. But still a sizable gain on top of that. Soltz again at the line. Back, and now he'll run it again. Right hand side, and he tripped up and brought down. Guess who? Re Reagan Cooper. I, he, I'm telling see, he can't even walk. He, he comes he's doing the tackle. Willis. He's doing the football version of Willis he, Reed. He, he gotta. I, it's <laughs> remarkable what he's doing out in the field. That is a spectacular play on top of that. It's only a two-yard gain. What looked like it was going to be a huge gain in the play. Yeah. Second and eight. Cooper stays in. In motion. Taylor out left-hand side. Empty backfield. Then Taylor will get the fling out past left-hand side. Has it. Dukes and Dukes and now stays on his feet all the way down near side sideline for 43 yards now the Mavericks have an opportunity to tie this up touchdown Mavericks and a missed tackle by Braylon Thomas the step through for Aiden Taylor and he scoots near side 
into the end zone. This ball game is almost tied. Here is Wilson with the extra point. Coming up, Gary on the hold. Snap back by Rubio is up, and it is good. Ever point, extra point makes it even. We're back where we started. 14 all, knotted it up with 6.25 left in the contest between McNeil and Bowie. You are watching the 6A Division II budget for playoffs on the NFHS Network. Last time these two teams played was back here at the Keller East Sports Complex between Bowie and McNeil. That back in 2007, non-district matchup by the way. McNeil won that one, 34 to 30. In fact, McNeil has never lost in five matchups to the Bowie Bulldogs. Five and oh. Five and oh. They're trying for six and oh in the more important stage of the playoffs. By this round of the Class 6A Division Two by district rounds. And right now, McNeil has momentum. They are down 14 to nothing, the majority of this game. They have struck back with 14 unanswered here in the fourth quarter, and now they kick it away from right to left. A line driver will go out of bounds at the penalty on the near side sideline. Smart. Jesse Martinez lets that one go away, uh, awry, as you would imagine he would. And now it will be Bowie with the football coming up first and 10. Steve, we had the ball, the game start out around the mid 50s, it's around oh, just below the 50, yard, uh, 50 degree mark. And we had a little mist, a lot of mist, and now the mist is back. So the weather is gonna be a factor. We've had a couple of turnovers in this game. I just wanna throw that out there because people that are not watching this wanna know what's going on. It's first and 10, the 30 yard line for Bowie after the penalty is assessed on the near side hash. Is this the autumn mist? Or, this is autumn mist. I got it, I got it. 14-14. 624 left. And then now the handoff. Here's Matabella. Finds the edge. Lowers the right shoulder. And he'll get up to near the 33 and a half, near the 34 yard line. Almost four yards on the carry. And we so try to go back to the well here. Matabella trying to find the edge. It has not been as uh, productive as going up the middle in the, well, in the A that, gap. That, that, that's right. A little slow developer there. Second and seven. Not the bell left hand side of the shotgun with Tello. Play action, Tello's gonna throw. He finds the receiver on the slant. Carmon Eli will now enter his name into the fray and move the chains at the 45 yard line. First and 10 for the Bulldogs find the short range pass to move the chains. I, I like that type of play to Carmine Eli. Really good route runner, solid hands. You can play pitch and catch down the field with a solid senior in Eli. Time is still now a bit of something we can take note of. Under five and a half to go, we're not at 14. Bui will be very deliberate here. Ball on the far side, hash going left to right. Bui now flings it out left hand side. the bell will be stopped and dropped. Aiden Taylor has been great on all sides of the ball. And this time he makes a huge play out of the backfield or into the backfield for about a six yard loss, nearly. Second and about 15. East, east West passes aren't working tonight. Just get the ball downfield. Let your playmakers get downfield. It's gonna be second now and about 17, 16 to go. 16, yep. Just take a nice eight, nine yard chunk and play 
You can hear below us now the crowd oh, well yeah. into this game. As, and, as well they uh, should as be. you'd imagine it would be. Second and 16 from their own 39 now. I mean, Bowie's taking down the one on the play clock. They just got it away. Here's Tello. He is in trouble, throws it out right inside. Caught and then dropped at midfield. Owen Ball just dropped the ball at midfield. And that would have been, had he just caught it and fell down. Third short, five. Short of the first yeah. down marker, but it have been a third and five situation as opposed to third and 16 now for the Bulldogs. Coverage coming in. Well, you still Cameron <laughs> Green, who has already had a pick in this game. You still have Rowan Wells. Now you bring Rowan Wells and Carmine Eli near side to us. It also stops the clock. Yes. An incomplete pass at 424. Trips right hand side. That's the long side of the field. One left is Cole Craddock. Back to pass is Tello. Throws middle of the field. Incomplete. Rowan Wells, the intended receiver, just around the First down mark at the 45 was behind Wells. He tried to get his left hand on it. He did, in fact, but unable to bring it back to his body. And it fell down to the ground. Incomplete pass. And McNeil now with two scores and two stops have an opportunity here with 419 left in the ball game. They've been down all game long, have evened things up, and have a chance to take the lead. Here is Polito with the punt. It's a nice one. Drives back Taylor to the 25 for a fair catch. And it's first down and 10 for the Mavericks. And they've got all kinds of positive vibes on their side of the sideline going right to left. Yeah, and that ball uh, on that last series, Rowan Wells was open. Had he had the ball a little bit either on him or in front, he probably has an opportunity to pick up the first down. But a good defensive stance there for the McNeil Mavericks who now have an opportunity to kick a field goal and win by three. First and 10 for their own 25 yard line. Fourth, 13 left. Here's Saltz back to pass, out left inside, caught. Christie has it at the 29, 30. He goes upfield and blasted back from behind. A little push at the end of that one at the 34 yard line, short by a yard. That by Ryan Trueblood, who finally made the stop. It's a game of nine. And Saltz is finding some rhythm with his receivers. This time, they had not really had any openings. This time, they are open. Here's Saltz, a little pitch on the inside route. It's uh, going to be a run by Gerald Gary. He gets past the 40 upfield. And the ball is loose on the near side sideline. And they're going to say recovered, I guess, at the 45-yard yes. line. And the replay, actually... That was a pretty good uh, scenario there because the ball was in the right arm, but Braylon Thomas got a strip, but covered up quickly, as you mentioned. Nicholas Bias with the re recovery. Yeah, good job. On that, which would have really turned the tide had it been recovered by the Bulldogs on the near side. It's hard to see based on all of the players being up against the sideline. But nonetheless, it's a first down and 10 from their own 45 here. It's all kinds of movement. Free play, and Soltz will lob it deep down the left side and incomplete. Well overthrowing Christie. As you had coverage underneath and over the top by Matthew Martinez. You don't have to jump. You, you're getting good push up front, and that's a complimentary. Now it's gonna be first and five at midfield for the McNeil Mavericks, and they are on the move. 3-11 left, and I'm telling you, how the tides have turned in this football game. The Bulldogs had this dead to rights for almost about three straight quarters. But this fourth quarter has been all McNeil. Empty backfield, first and five from midfield. Here's Soltz, he'll fling it left-hand side quickly. Ball is dropped, I believe. This is gonna be incomplete as the ball is also picked up by Bowie, but intended for Aiden Taylor. He could not hold on to that. He didn't even make a football move. It just hit off his arms. Be incomplete nonetheless. It's now second down and five at midfield for the McNeil Mavericks. Garrett Gibson back in the middle. Yep, nice to see him back again. Williams out of the shotgun to Soltz to the left hand side, trips right hand side, one left. Soltz again will deliberately look out left hand side. Christie is your lone receiver left hand side, and they're way off of him. 
are the Bully Bulldogs. Here's Saltz now ranging against the grain, throws it and incomplete. Well overthrowing his intended receiver, but I think on purpose because he was well covered by Matthew Martinez. They bring him a third down from midfield and five to go for McNeil. Bowie, two down, one more to go. Yeah, two down territory though, I would believe for McNeil. I would believe. Well, I mean, you even it up at 14, I don't know. Just punt and see if you can know. get in the overtime. You're right. Yeah, okay. Right. Defense has played pretty well. We'll see, but you still have this one more down here as McNeil is looking for a big time play. They fling it out left hand side. Doug Gray will throw it, and Chrissy has it at the 40 and inside. There he'll stay. A trick play. Chickens. Uh, the I think he was forward though, because I, I think he. Are, I think he was forward. Who's I don't. He? I think Who's this he? is a double pass. So you think that the yeah. pass was forward to Gray, I, 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 and then Gray threw it forward again. I think this should be a penalty. I agree. I, that could very well be the case. But let's and they're not saying that. No. They're, no the officials are going to let it go. I can see where that could be two forward passes in question. You know what? You've got the video. You can rewind it as much as you want, but the officials don't have that capability. We're under three to go, and McNeil has it first and ten nonetheless. Under center is Saltz. And now look over. Deep. I mean, I'm talking about nine yards deep is Williams. Saltz back to pass, flings it out. Right-hand side caught by Gary. A lose a couple of tacklers. He goes upfield to the 32-yard line of the Bowie Bulldogs. For about a six-yard gain. Second down and four. Yeah, and you let this team, the McNeil Mavericks, back in the game. And right now, on the 32 of Bowie. Got a sophomore kicker in Bryce Wilson. We'll see how that goes. One receiver out right-hand side is Gary. Trips left-hand side. Gary has Colt James on him. Long look in here as Saltz continues to... Look over. Now he's going to go Gary's way, right hand side, and it will be caught at the 10 yard line. Gaines, or excuse me, Cole James was right behind him trying to get a paw on it, but gaining some inside advantage on the far side of the field was Gary, and he gets the catch at the 10, first down. Clock runs, first down to goal to go from the 10 with 142 left, and the miss continues to come down. Under center now is Saltz. Williams behind him. Clock runs, and the Mavericks are going to run this clock as much as they can to keep Bowie from having an opportunity. Here's Williams up the middle. He gets around the five, and he's stopped there by Wyatt Barnes. Now a timeout is called. That clock, that stops the clock. We're, you know, we're not going anywhere, by the way. That, they can stop the clock as much as they want. 117 left. And there is one timeout remaining for McNeil. Bowie has three. I thought Bowie took the timeout here. Did they? Okay. Well. Excuse it's hard, me. It's hard for me to see who took the timeout. Well, n the board hasn't moved. So no, we, I, I'm uh, waiting for the board. And we looked. I got it. I looked for Somebody the white cap. Somebody took a timeout. I looked for the white cap to point one way or the other. Who took the timeout? Well, it's being written down by the white cap. But there was no indication. You know what? If you say white cap one more time, Steve. That's what they call each other. I know, but I don't care what they call it. He's not he hasn't said anything. And nobody's indicated anything. Sorry. Somebody could somebody call a timeout, I get it. Well, I have no indication of that. And the board hasn't moved, because they don't know either. <laughs> no, they don't. I thought McNeil took it. Nonetheless, it's a shotgun formation. No receivers right hand side, two left. Williams gets the carry and he'll be blown up from behind. Braylon Thomas made the initial hit. No gain to the play. In fact, he'll lose a couple. And now Bowie will take a timeout. I know that because the entire, like, staff. three people from the staff came out and took the timeout <laughs> with 112 to go. And you so have the, to be in the board operator needs to get on page here because I know <laughs> Bowie at least took that timeout. They have two remaining. But nobody took a timeout apparently in the last series. I'm telling you, nobody's changed. I, I, at least from right. what we know from so the So one timeout scoreboard. has not been allocated and we don't know. 
Correct. Because the white cap didn't tell us, and the board doesn't know either. You said. Oh, Bowie. Bowie took the timeout. So Bowie has now one remaining. Which makes sense. As they continue now to hold on. Third down and goal to go. It's 14-14. McNeil's been down the entire game. Yes. They scored 14 unanswered here in the fourth quarter. Yes. They're knocking on the door. Yes. And now opportunity here to really make it difficult with a touchdown. Right. Third down. Out right-hand side is Calhoun. Left-hand side is Christie. And you're going to have an offset eye right-hand side out of the, basically a pistol formation with Williams deep behind uh, Saltz. But, I, you know, Steve, I, there's no way that Gary doesn't get this football. Yeah, there he's is. out right hand side. He's the up man to the right. He gets. He, he, there could be a difference. I understand you're right, but I can't imagine he doesn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Shotgun. Back to pass. Throw out left hand side and incomplete. In fact, nobody was in the vicinity, <laughs> and so I don't know what that play was. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. The clock stops, and Bowie has one timeout remaining. It's fourth down and goal to go from the seven. So McNeil will come out to kick it with 111 to go in the game to take the lead by three. We'll see. Right now, 25-yard field goal. 25-yard field goal by the sophomore. Bryce. Wilson. Far side hash. Driving missed. Kicks it away. It is up, and it is good. If you couldn't tell, with 107 to go, McNeil has taken their first lead of the game. With the field goal up, Bowie trails by three. Right. But with one timeout to go, still a lot of life left in this game. We'll see what happens. I agree. But McNeil with 17 unanswered. You think you got this game figured out? Oh, no. Every single time. No. And you don't. Never. Well, here's the good thing. For Bowie. Bowie, 25-yard field goal. Bowie has one timeout that they didn't have to use. And Matthew Martinez had a really good return on the last score from McNeil. The other thing is McNeil has to play for against field position and a touchdown. They're up. They've got a lot of life and momentum. But with a minute seven, if they kick this ball out of bounds, the ball's at the 30. Matthew Martinez gets a nice return. You still got about probably 55 let's seconds. Say, let's say none of that happens. You just ball at the 25-yard line. Let's go for that. You better find Rowan average. Wells okay. and Carmine Eli. Rowan Wells has been absent almost the entire second half of play. But is this? Did you write it like this to like have him go away, kind of like Jaws? And then the guy shows up at that. the end. I don't know if I would write that for Bowie. If I was Bowie on Bowie's sideline, I wouldn't write this close. Okay. I wouldn't write it that close. All right. Nonetheless, you're down by three now if you're a Bowie Bulldog fan. McNeil, what a wonderful return to sender. This is a team that had won, not Hadn't been, been in the, the playoffs. playoffs in 19 <laughs> seasons. And the last time they did... They won against Bowie. Oh, wow. 19 to 10. Oh, wow. They actually lost to the eventual state champion, right. Tyler Lee. Wow. They beat the Woodlands in area. Here we go. So here we go. Wilson with the kickoff from right to left. It'll be fielded at the eight yard line, brought up there to the 20. Near side now and upfield to the 24 yard line. Bella, I believe, yeah, on the return. And he is holding his right hand. And now I'll be first down and 10. Bowie <laughs> will be looking for a drive of the ages here. Well, Cruz Tello, you got 61 seconds, brother. Trips right hand side, one left is Rowan Wells. Back is Tello, flings it out right. Here is Carmon Eli, he gets out of bounds. And that should stop the clock, but we've seen otherwise. It's about 10 yards. You're actually going to mark him. Oh, my God. you got to mark it. 
He's a yard short. He's a yard short. No, he's two yards short okay. at the 34-yard line. But that stops the clock of 56 seconds to go. A lot of Second time. Second and two. Bought the bell on the left-hand side. Tello again. Quickly. He will get underneath the pressure. Loses the football. I think the ball went forward. But Mata Bell will get underneath it. They're going to mark it at the 25-yard line, the fumble recovery. But I felt like Tello had gotten rid of that football on the throw. <laughs> Hold up. I did. It, it may be a timeout here. And Bowie has to take the call of the timeout with 41 seconds to go. But Tello was ranging to his left. And the forward motion with his hands, the ball came out forward. That should not be a turnover. It, 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 well, I, I don't know what to tell you. Except find Rowan Wells, who has beaten this defense deep twice already tonight. The third time may be the charm. And if you're McNeil, you got to watch 21 going deep. You've got to watch 21 going deep. They are keeping the... Okay, they're going to bring it back all the way. So it's going to be third and nine. They're going to say it's a fumble recovery by Bowie. No timeouts remaining for the Bulldogs. Down by three now, 17, 14, 46 seconds to go. Two down territory. And then yes. you just got to keep playing. Trips right hand side. And that has Cole Craddock in the mix along with Owen Ball and Carmine Ely. He's far out right hand side. Out left is Rowan Wells. Shotgun for Tello. Right hand side, he has Montebella. Ranging out right hand side, Tello. Then looking left. Now he'll have to be forced to run with the football. Then he flings it down the middle of the field and incomplete. Rowan Wells tried to come back on that ball and fell down at the 42 yard line of the um, McNeil Mavericks. He was open. He was open. But he, again, that slick field is going to factor in a little bit. Tello, you could, I could tell by the way he threw that football. But again, Wells. He was, he was trying to, to he, was, back on that. He, he was, was kind of trying to lob it. You got to throw it on him. Now, Steve, you only need nine yards. Right. So you may have to run for gotta a first get, down. Got to, got to get to the 35 yard line for a first. 39 seconds to go. Meanwhile, you have no timeouts remaining. You get to stop the clock if you're able to get a first down. This is the season for the Bowie Bulldogs. Trips right hand side, one left, and Ron Wells. Now here's Tello back, and now will be stoppage of play as that ball. There's a flag all the way back at the 43-yard line, and it'll be a delay a game. Delay a game. Wow. Against Bowie. You have the Murphy's Law working if you're with the Bowie Bulldogs. Yeah. If anything yeah. can go wrong, it will. It has in this fourth quarter. Still life. Fourth and 14 at their own 20. Unbelievable. Bowie down by three. 39 seconds to go. Trips right hand side. Here's Tello. Back to pass again. Has time. Throws it. And it will be caught by Carmine Eli. He falls down at the 40 yard line. And that's enough for a first down. Stops the clock with 32 seconds to go. Quickly to the line are the Bulldogs. They still have a bit of life. Clock runs. 29 seconds. Snaps the ball. 26. Back is Tello. Now looking down, and now he'll be running and throw it down the deep down the right side of the line. And it'll be Cole Craddock, the intended receiver, with triple coverage at the 15-yard line. That does stop the clock with 17 seconds to go. It's second down and 10 from their own 40-yard line for the Bulldogs. Yes, Steve, what? And that ball hit right on the pads. That's why they tell you to catch the ball with your hands, because Cole Craddock had everybody beat. He let the ball play him, and that ball hit right you're off also, of his you're shoulder You're also pass. talking about a junior receiver that has four catches on the year, but now he has played well in this game so far. Here is a another pass for Tello. Has time, then flush out of the pocket, throws out right hand side, and will throw out of bounds. Nine seconds to go. There should be nine seconds. We're going to have an eight. So third down and ten for Bowie. Eight seconds to go. And Steve, you gotta imagine, this is your last play of the season, possibly. I'd make this two plays. I understand. I would I would try to get 15 so Tello can throw the ball into the end zone. Because he it's hard to throw 60 yards in high school. And it, Tello's not the guy with the strongest of arms. No. But if he can get 15 and you yards. Ball on top of that. Yeah, get about 15 yards and get out of bounds. 
and then throw to the end zone. Trips right hand side, one left is Rowan Wells. Here is Tello, season on the line. He, this is the last play of the game. Throws it out right hand side, caught by Carmine Eli. Three seconds, Carmine gets out at the 45 yard line. Steve, you masterfully put that together. And now Bowie will have one more shot at the end zone with three seconds to go as Carmine Eli got out of bounds in time. And we'll see how this ends up playing out. Last play of the game. First down and 10 for the 45 of McNeil Bowie. Here's Tello. He will stay in the pocket, lead, lob it deep down into the end zone, bobbled around and it was loose, but unable to come back on it was Carmon Eli and the McNeil Mavericks come back in convincing and amazing fashion and win the game 17-14 against the Bowie Bulldogs. We had an opportunity. Had an opportunity. They did not convert there, but that's what you wanted. You wanted an opportunity for Cruz Tello to throw this ball into the end zone. Unfortunately, Rowan Wells is down still in the end zone. Want to understand if he is okay. Maybe he's just dejected. I think that's what it is. I think that's more of the case. Yeah. But a great comeback oh, for the McNeil goodness. Mavericks, who, as you mentioned, <laughs> stay perfect against the Bowie Bulldogs Six for life. Oh. Well, I mean, you have to go all the way back to 2007 to go back on this series. Right. And it still holds true to form that McNeil was held dead to rights with a 14-0 deficit at half and also in the third quarter going into the fourth. Yeah. 17 unanswered and Steve the we have the same song different verse for the Bowie Bulldogs who have held serve at the beginning of games and unable to hold on and close things out but this is a very young and for the most part inexperienced team with two starters returning on both sides of the football and these are the moments of any of us that have gone through life know that build on all the things you need to be successful later on yeah but i think I, this I'm Bowie saying, team is going to kick themselves you, I'm just telling tomorrow. You, there's no reason for them not to. I, I'm not saying that it shouldn't be but, the case. But the, the McNeil Mavericks showing, and this is why people watch football games, D, for just this moment. You can't count a team out no matter what it looks like at halftime or at the end of the third quarter. With this win now, the McNeil Mavericks, in their sixth playoff appearance ever, have moved on to the area round of the playoffs. But you know what? They are two for two in the budget round of the playoffs in their last two times. Uh, times. Yeah. So the last time they went to the area round, or excuse me, the budget round, they they beat Bowie again 19 to 10. They took on the Woodlands and won that game 27 14 before they lost to Tyler Lee 38 to 13. All the four other playoff games they had preceding, they had lost in by district uh, round. By the way, for Bowie, uh, going to buy district, they were seven and nine overall. Now they're obviously seven and ten, and uh, they lost to Vandergrift last year, twenty-eight to fourteen. That great run in twenty twenty-one, where they knocked off Round Rock and Smithson Valley, only to lose to Brennan. Uh, that is the last time that Bowie won in the buy district round of the Texas high school football playoffs, and the McNeil Mavericks continue their storybook run and all the credit going to Scott Hermes who had done a great job you, you have to imagine Steve this is a coach in his fourth year that had not won but five games going into this 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 season he won six and it doesn't it takes a bit of time to move and turn around programs you're right and right now uh, obviously going in the right direction whatever Drew Sanders is growing over with Vandegrift and distributing to his coaching tree continues to uh, proliferate. 
as uh, McNeil moves forward to the area around the Texas High School football. You got players. me on pro pro proliferate. Proliferate. I love proliferate. proliferate. One of my favorite. Yes, actually, uh, the effort uh, never waned on either side of the football. Correct. By the way, Bowie, there's you can't hang your head at all for the Bulldogs from that capacity. Clearly, they came in with their A game and they put all, forth all the effort they possibly could. We saw some incredible, uh, Reagan Cooper, my goodness, basically on one leg. Braylon Thomas was flying all over the field. You know, I, I could go on and on on names for Bowie as well for the course of how they matured from the beginning part of the season towards the tail end of the season. This, this is a tough one. This is a tough one for the Bowie Bulldog faithful. Absolutely. And, you know, again, you mentioned it. And it came, <laughs> see, I, I wish you wouldn't have brought this up uh, if you talked about the turnovers me. because as soon as you brought them up, guess what? The McNeil Mavericks started it creating happens. them. It and happens. They started happening. The great it, equalizer. It, it, the great equalizer. And you mentioned about four a game. Well, I think they got about four in this game. <laughs> so, four Amori? Four Amori. Yeah, you don't want to hear that. No. Uh, well, nonetheless... The crowd mic went out, so we, I think that the door that you just closed might have caused that to end up happening. We're Correct. still on the air. Yeah. Just look at the door, and there's a connection there. So look at the connection. It's okay. <laughs> Heavy. Well, it's been one of those uh, technical components of the season as well. But nonetheless, Steve, you know, yeah, we're going to take a break really fast, actually. And when we come back, we will round things out here from Killary Sports Complex. The Bowie Bulldogs with a valiant effort, but you know what? What a incredible return and uh, uh, belief in themselves as they have shown all season long. The McNeil Mavericks with the victory 17-14. 17, 17 unanswered to cap it off here against the Bowie Bulldogs on the Bidish ground of the Texas High School football playoffs. You are, again, listening and watching the uh, Class 6A Division II Bidish ground of the Texas High School football playoffs along the NFS, NFHS network.